what is an arborist? How do you define safety on your crew? What is your strategy for selling tree work? Are trees sentient beings? And why wigs and aerial rescue do not mix? Through a mix of deep dives on individual subjects, getting out and field testing our equipment, and interviews with the people that make up our industry, Tree Thinking will answer these questions and many more as we try to understand the tree world around us on the Tree Thinking Podcast. All right, this episode was a lot of fun. It was a full house. We were joking around. We had good conversations with Nick and Dan and Doug and all people that are a lot of fun to talk to and have a great insight to the industry. So thank you guys for coming on. And with that, we're going to take care of some business and then get right into the episode. Hopefully you enjoy. This podcast is for informational purposes only. It is not, nor is it intended to be, a substitute for professional arboriculture advice and should never be relied upon to perform or direct arboricultural work. The Tree Thinking Podcast makes no representations as to the accuracy, completeness, or suitability of any information on this podcast will not be liable for any damages arising from the use of any information in the practice of arboriculture or tree work. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the guests and their appearance on the podcast does not imply an endorsement of them or any entity they represent. The podcast and its hosts are not to be held responsible for misuse, cited, and or unsighted copies of the content within this podcast by others. The Tree Thinking Podcast may not be reproduced or distributed without the express written consent of the Tree Thinking Podcast. The tree work industry is full of amazing people. We are a mosaic of college-educated, internet research, trial and error, skill passed down through mentorship, knowledge shared over a beer, and good old-fashioned self-taught. How did you get where you're at? And where are you going? Even if you've been doing this work for a decade, there's always something else to learn. And when you start teaching, it might just take your learning to another level. After all, young world, the world is yours. On this episode of the Tree Thinking Podcast, we do some research into trial and error, look at the benefits of self-taught and mentorship, All while consuming a couple beers on education, evolution, and the arborist community. All right, we're back again. This episode I'm pretty stoked with. It's a theme that's kind of come up for a few episodes. Before we get into it, though, we're going to introduce ourselves. Uh, My name's Andrew Myron. Uh, Rob Myron. Becca Snowdale. And Corey Shields. And then we have a special guest, at least for the first part of this podcast. Yeah, hi everyone, Nick Bonner. Nice, welcome Nick, thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me, you guys are doing a great job with this. Oh, thanks, it's really fun, we've gotten a lot of good feedback, and it's kind of funny getting the feedback, because we're just hanging out, having a good conversation, so to have someone be like, oh, that was awesome, it's like, yeah, it's a lot of fun. (laughs) (laughs) On this episode, we're going to get into a a theme that keeps coming up. We've talked to a few really skilled arborists, and one of the things we keep hearing is how they started out at the beginning. You know, a lot of guys started out climbing, pruning with spurs, or didn't understand how to make good cuts, and, you know, their skills evolved, and they kept learning, and they kept, you know, fighting to, to make sure that they were a little better today than they were yesterday, and so we kind of wanted to talk about that a little bit. And then we saw some of those videos that you were putting out on tree stuff, the Arborist Community Expert videos. And those were really inspirational because uh, it really kind of summed up that spirit of, you know, just everyday tree people that are out there doing their best to share their knowledge. And yeah, that's, that's just really cool. That's what's making the industry better. Yeah, hundred percent. It was a super fun, it was a super fun program. Well, we're going to dive into the first segment which is going over those videos. Lucky enough to have you on and kind of get a feel for for that. And I figured I'd start it off. One of the cool things about tree stuff, and I've, I've kind of talked about, I think I told you this when we were going back and forth, but one of the cool things about tree stuff, in my opinion, is at first it looks just like another retailer. You know, we're selling you tree gear. But as if you start clicking on links on that website, you're going to find a lot of educational material. You're going to find a lot of, 
uh, webinars, how to's and just stuff that builds community. Yeah. And, and I don't know what, what kind of inspired you to do that? You don't see that on a lot of websites. Well, I think, you know, you're, you are seeing more people uh, work with video. Um, but I think the reason that we started doing that was that's how I started in the Arborist industry. I was watching videos from Reg Coates and, you know, August Henneke and Brian Bixler and seeing those guys, I mean, Daniel Murphy, right? Like watching videos of, you know, people doing good things, people doing bad things and learning from them. And when, you know, we really got going at Tree Stuff, we started to put resources towards that and punching out videos like 360 videos, uh, just going over the products and then things for events and then training videos and things like that. And in this case, Weaver came to us and they were, you know, they wanted to generate user generated content and get people making videos and, um, we kind of put our heads together and this was the idea that we came up with and we didn't really know what to expect. And, you know, I think you see, you look at the videos that came out of this project. It's pretty surprising. Yeah. There's definitely a lot of quality videos that came out of this. What was the grand total? 35 total videos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think we ended up with uh, somewhere, somewhere in the thirties. There were a couple that, you know, got moved around and but yeah, I think there's 34, 35 now. Uh, one that, uh, you referred to me, uh, was, what was it? Uh, water and me. Oh yeah. Yeah. Water and me with Will Smith. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I saw that. Oh, it cracked me up. (laughs) 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 Yep. Nope. Not, not the Will Smith, but the creativity of it. There was that one. And then what was the, what was the throw ball? Uh, getting a throw ball. I don't remember the name of it. Getting the throw ball unstuck. Getting the throw ball unstuck. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one too. Yeah. And they both kind of had that same theme of not taking it too serious and just having fun. And those were great. Yeah. I love to see, uh, the amount of people in those videos that had such a great sense of humor. It's just almost every, every one of them. There was some little quip in there that made me, made me giggle a little bit. (laughs) My favorite. Yeah, a really wide range of, of creators, too, which was surprising. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Becca. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say that of all, I mean, there's a lot of really good, awesome information in there, but <laughs> the one that got me the, the most was the one with the fella who uh, showed you how to whistle with an acorn. Cat. <laughs> <laughs> and just, it's, it's not like the most technical or, you know, like in terms of work, work efficiency or anything like that, but it's just something clever that you never would have thought i i never would have thought of it and it was just a joy to watch and (laughs) (laughs) that one got me good Uh, i'm gonna show everyone that it's my new party trick (laughs) (laughs) well and there was such a wide variety because it was everything from a video like that to uh the old guy that uh was spurring what was he, 70? Yes, Renee. Renee. Yeah, yeah. Renee. Yeah. I mean, that was just straight inspirational. Yeah, cool dude's, dude. dude's a badass. Yeah. Yeah, I love that dude. I think that he has, like, a cl- yard cleanup day is the same day as beer trimming day. <laughs> 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 I love, no offense, Renee, if you're listening. I love you, man. Yeah. Was, he was... He was one of my favorites. Like, I mean, his beard was so long, I could never. I mean, I can't. I can't even grow a beard uh, at all. So, um, <laughs> Amy neither. And, and he had a couple videos too, because he did a timber hitch video as well. And the whole time I was oh, yeah. watching that timber hitch video, I'm like, he's gonna get his beard stuck in that timber hitch. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna get his beard stuck in it. I love how yeah. the title of that was tying a timber hitch the right way. <laughs> I thought uh, Jonathan Schwartz, who Jonathan Schwartz is like the top saw guy. And he's just such a bright, a bright person and a, a, just a character. He's a high school woodshop teacher. And he um, was a mentor for one of my friends, actually, Brian Bixler, out in <clears throat> Grass Valley, California. And uh, it's weird because I don't know that Jonathan Schwartz knows that he's connected to me that way. But he's yeah. been sending out these I mean, pretty crazy ideas over the years. And he's always got some new product idea. And, we haven't been able to pursue all of them, but we sell his uh, top saw product. And then uh, he sent in a couple of videos, but one of them was like how to set up your truck. And he's like, this is how I drive from being a high school shop teacher to doing tree work. He's like, I can shift my bins around. It was really cool. I liked that one. That's yeah. Awesome. I, I, I think I watched both of his videos cause he had a saw maintenance and then that setting up his, his, um, his back of his truck. And I actually just bought yeah, the... that saw maintenance is his new product. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Well, I might have to check that out because I just bought his top saw product and that is, I'm impressed so far. I like it. 
Yeah, I, I like the video of him setting up the back of the truck as well. I mean, he just had a place for everything, and with the, the way you could access it from the side, I mean, he had put a lot of thought into that. And then he's, you know, just put this board here, and you can sleep in the back, and... I mean, you know, that was next level. He spent just a few hours in that truck. It's, it's a <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that's great. I also, I like the yoga one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so, I was not expecting that. And that's one of those things that if if you're starting out in the tree game, mm-hmm. stretch, take care of your body. Be, you've I've seen so many people that have had to leave the industry because they've been hurt. Yeah. You know, where just a little bit of stretching, a little bit of, taking care of yourself goes a long way it's so funny uh that i uh i found the tree people yoga on instagram me too a a month or so ago and then i saw that video i was like it's the guy it's so cool but those are yeah that's a that's useful information you know stretching and and the staying hydrated you know little things whistling through an acorn cat (laughs) you never know whimsical things you never know yeah (laughs) I think, I think the, uh, the information on the wildlife cavities is really interesting, yeah. right? That to me seems like a, a great way to pitch a customer on keeping the wood in the yard, you know? Yeah. Uh, the more educated we can be and the more confidently people can talk about doing wildlife cavities, we can uh, save, save people's backs, right? You know, let's leave this about eight feet high. You know, it's nice and big. We'll cut a little wildlife cavity and it'll be perfect. Yep. Yeah. Our, the last episode we put out was all about wildlife. And we had uh, Sarah Ward from the Forest Service on, and she broke down a lot of the benefits, you know, and how these wildlife uh, snags are so beneficial to the environment and kind of that synergy between the two is great. I mean, there's a lot of information there. It was good to see people making actual bird boxes with plunge cuts in video, though, because I haven't seen that in person before. I've only ever heard of it. So the, to, to visualize that and then see someone explain it as they're doing it was very useful for me, I think. We should, we should share it on the social media. That yeah. way if someone hears the episode and wants that tutorial, or if you're listening, if you listen to it, go to Tree Stuff. There's a few of them there, and they're all good. It's all there, yeah. Some of them were very specific to particular birds, too, which... As we talked about before, you know, you yeah, <laughs> Corey and his starling <sighs> problem. Starlings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, those are those are great, and it's just uh, an another testament to how I think um, the internet and social media, and especially with what you all are doing, Nick, and all the great folks at Tree Stuff, kind of putting some resources out there, uh, some stuff. Yeah, you know, even old timers didn't think of, or you know, newcomers. Yeah, invaluable. Yeah, everybody's going on the internet looking. Everybody's looking to learn things on YouTube. I think mm-hmm. we just uh, we just dubbed. Oh, you guys have probably seen. We have a really long video where we talk about uh, all the different types of climbing gear and stuff, and it like pops everything up on the screen. And it's kind of like a video catalog. We just dubbed that into Spanish. Yeah. So we had a professional Spanish voice actor um, it. translate it and re-record it for us. And it's unfortunately it's still me. Standing there, and I'm like, it's like, you know, hola, soy de Juana, three stuff, puta, And uh, it's as much of it as I can say. But it, it, it hits, and it's, it's really well timed. And, uh, you know, hopefully uh, we're making resources more accessible for people, and, and that more people can get at them. We also just started doing uh, Spanish transcriptions at the bottom of a lot of our video pages on the site. So if you're uh, Spanish speaking and you, you, know, you want to look something up, at least there's a machine transcription of the whole video there, as well as doing things like Spanish uh, closed captioning and stuff like that too. So trying to apply, take some of the older video work that we've done and bring it to a larger audience or just make it more accessible for people. That's fabulous. Oh yeah, no, that's great. It, we have a couple of people that have downloaded uh, episodes down in Mexico. So if uh, if you guys want, go check it out. <laughs> they got they got the Spanish videos on Tree yeah. Stuff. <laughs> yeah, you do, you can actually go to treestuff.com slash espanol, uh, and there's a, there's like a whole host of growing growing Spanish resources, Spanish language stuff. So that's cool. Oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome, and that's that's such a need. Like in the industry, I've known a lot of Spanish speaking climbers who have even like struggled trying to get certified in the isa because they don't speak english so and all the i a lot of the isa tests are in span or not in any english and that was i think before they actually made because uh, they've made some newer resources where they are, are in spanish now but um 
like in the early days, it's it's it, it's a pretty big struggle because it was all in English. Maybe we could do our certification class in uh, in Spanish. That might be a little harder. It's considerably longer. Yeah. We could look into that. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, worth looking into maybe. Yeah. yeah. I mean, depending on how hard it would be, that that could have some uh, real life changing uh, effect for somebody if they had that same problem you're talking about. You know, that'd be really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you guys have really been contributing, though, right? I mean, you're in, like, you think you've got, what, seven episodes of this thing published, five or something? And uh, you just finished that roundtable review format, which, I mean, I thought was one of the better product review formats and executions that I've seen from in any market. I mean, from bicycling gear to clothes, you know, having a group of people go over a product, you know, multiple times um, and bring kind of, like perspective to it uh, from a really diverse group. I, I thought that was really beneficial. I'm looking forward. We don't have the third installment yet, but I think I think that was really cool. That it was. It's a lot of fun doing it. We we haven't filmed the third installment quite yet. We've uh, like so much of the country. There's been big storms, and we're having trouble putting a weekend together where everybody's not working or doing something. But we will. We have so much fun doing it. And yeah. when when we first started talking about it. You know, we wanted to do a good job. We didn't want to just do, you know, your average video. So we kind of started looking around for what some of the critiques of unboxing videos are. And people just kept saying, you know, it, it just seems like, you know, almost a, a bad actor. And so we were just like, heck, you know, let's just have a good time. You know, let's just talk about it. And then the other thing is people were just tired of hearing, like, you know, these these scripts that were written by the company to try to sell their product. And it's like, that's not what people want. People would rather they, you know, there's no such thing as the perfect piece of gear. So when you pretend it's the perfect piece of gear, yeah. you know, you're it just losing credibility. It seems mm -hmm. disingenuous and you're just, nobody's going to buy that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So we've, we've been having so much fun doing that, man. Thank yeah. Thanks for that opportunity. That's a huge compliment. Yeah. I know yeah. you can't see us all right now, but I, I feel like we're all beaming. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Blushing and beaming. Well, you, you stole the show, Becca, at the end of the first <laughs> video with your, with your wrench dressing. And Kale, <laughs> the guy who does the video editing, is like, he's a perfect deadpan, right? He's always got oh deadpan comedy. And at the end there, it's just like, it just cuts. And then it's like, it's back, and it's just like wrench stressing, and then boom, it cuts again. You're like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. No, Becca's I the heart. Didn't, didn't expect to see that. <laughs> yeah. She's the heart and soul with her puns. She she keeps us all entertained and give, gives us more than just oh, being man. a couple boring tree guys talking. She keeps us, keeps us going. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Shout out to my dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's fun. It's been great. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad you guys like the community expert program. Uh, I don't know when this is going to air, but uh, there's still voting left on it uh, right Good. now. Um, but you know, if not, uh, those videos will be available uh, forever. And uh, I definitely want to thank Weaver. You know, they put up the prizes. There was three thousand dollars in prizes for that event. So three people are going to win a thousand bucks, and that all comes from Weaver. And, we definitely wouldn't have done it without them or having a prize. So it's pretty cool. Sweet. Yeah. Nice. All right. Awesome. Uh, Jamie just got here. Uh, so, uh, Oh, awesome. Jamie. Yep. We, Everybody the crew just got Jamie. a little bigger. <laughs> it, it was great to one. It was just a community builder. It's so cool to see the different people in the community contributing in all their ways. Going back to those wildlife videos is one of my favorites because the wildlife, there is different versions of it. And so the way the different people did it, just kind of highlighted how you can do a great video in so many different ways and still make it entertaining and still make it educational. It, it was a great yeah, I didn't resource. expect two videos on wildlife cavities, that's for sure, much less one. I was kind of surprised when we ended up getting the same content from multiple authors. We were like, wow, that's just that's awesome. Do you have anything else you want to say about the videos? No, no. I think, I, you know, I'm glad that you guys were into it, and it's uh, it's awesome to hear you talk about them in such detail and and to know that you guys are really getting something out of it and um i think what you guys are doing is awesome so i can uh i can bounce and let let jamie come in and let you guys get on to your next segment the whole next <laughs> segment is just gonna be about jamie yeah, oh, yeah. so jamie how's your day today bro <laughs> Right thanks, on. Nick. Yeah. <laughs> thanks guys have a good night yeah you hey, too thank you, thank you so much for coming on see ya cheers bye 
Nice. Yeah. Hey, Just Jamie, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Doing good. He's doing like, good. do I smell bad? <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Well, that was great having Nick on and getting some of the uh, the inside perspective on their videos and and what they're doing over there. Again, we're all big big fans of Tree Stuff and how they're adding to our community and. Uh, that that's part of what we got going with this episode is uh, how you know the community uh, helps educate each other, which builds the community. It's it's one of those things that builds on itself, and they're really uh, the tip of the spear with some of the programs they're doing. Yeah, definitely. I know a lot of people that are really good climbers and really good arborists that like getting into it they were like sure i had mentors but um, a lot of folks i know just went they were just watching youtube videos youtube um, arborist yeah, yeah even in the before times right yeah. like pre-pandemic <laughs> this was a thing and now that now that we're so limited with our contact abilities having those resources is that much more valuable i think well, it seems like the industry has been advancing it really fast and you know a big part of the reason why it has been is uh companies like tree stuff yeah that are doing innovative stuff like you know supporting podcasts like tree thinking yeah. and you know doing gear reviews and all the promotional stuff they're doing it it's changing the industry yeah can you imagine this happening 15 20 30 years ago yeah. something like this yeah even five I mean, years ago even five years ago yeah. yeah yeah so you know a big big part of why uh, there's been so much advance advancement in the industry is because of places like Tree Stuff. So, uh, thank thanks a lot to everybody working hard on yeah. uh, making that happen. Yeah, big time. Well, I'm thinking back to the first seminar that I remember going to, and I'm not sure if you were there or not. But we went down to Southern Oregon. It was I'm trying to remember what it was about. It was definitely it was pruning. I can't remember what it was specific. It might have been subordination pruning. But it was probably 10 different tree guys from around the state. And it was prob I'm guessing it was uh, uh, 99. So it was quite a while ago. But I remember thinking like, oh, this is cool. You know, I'm we got 10 people hanging out and talking. Uh -huh. And now on the internet, you know, it's thousands <laughs> of people yeah. hanging out and talking. So, I mean, the growth of knowledge and community, you know, because back then you didn't, you know, there wasn't those resources. Yeah, I, I see it just the growth of the tree care industry just kind of hitting light speed at this point. Like you have thousands of voices all contributing. Again, if you, if you ask 10 different arborists how to, you know, do one thing, you're going to get nine different answers. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But with this, you, you've got so many voices and there's just such a synthesis of knowledge. It's, I mean, it's like anything with the internet. It's, it's just changing life as we know it. Well, and it, you might get nine different answers. Mm-hmm. But they each answer might have some beneficial bit to it. Absolutely. Exactly. You know, and so that can all help you build your opinion and your technique. And mm -hmm. then you teach somebody and they take what works best for them out of your ant you know, it, yeah. it, it, yeah, it's you such could, a cool concept. Yeah, yeah. That just that whole synthesis of knowledge. It's not just ten different answers and each one of those is black and white. It's yeah, you, you synthesize it into actually moving forward. You meld it all together. That's right. You get like a soup. Yeah, or mixed together like a brownie mix. Oh, God. Arborist soup <laughs> with tree work brownies for dessert. <laughs> with Next thing you know, the sprinkles. job's done. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Nice. Watch the tree work brownies, though. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> Just watch them. Don't, don't eat them. Yeah. 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 Don't no. eat them. <laughs> Tangent, tangent, tangent. Yeah. I don't understand where this conversation is going. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. You had one too many, Art Brown. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, what have you guys talked about so far? You just had Nick on, talked about the videos. Uh, a recurring theme that we've had going over is, you know, we're talking to all these really skilled people, and they're talking about how they started in spurs or, you know, how they came up not knowing how to make a right cut or all this stuff mm -hmm. and how they've kept on learning. Mm -hmm. And they've kept at it and, like, put this bit of knowledge to that bit of knowledge. And, you know, how it's evolved into these internet, you know, on your all these web pit sites. We haven't got into social media yet. That'll be a whole nother, uh, <laughs> a whole nother thing. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, and how, it, how the industry's grown and how many different ways there are to learn and whatnot. Nice. Kind of makes me think of uh, something Nate said to me, but I think 
uh, Hornaday told him that is like you can Google a pruning cut, so there's no reason to make a a bad pruning cut. <laughs> yeah. I've heard yeah. I've heard Hornaday yeah. say yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty great. Yeah. Doesn't that go with everything? Yeah, man. Yeah. Now. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Although I still can't make good banana bread. <laughs> <laughs> Try a different recipe. You can find it on Google. Yeah. There's only like 6,000 of them. Yeah. The problem is Try I get distracted with the story. And <laughs> adding nuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's Googling how to put out a fire. <laughs> <laughs> how to zip my pants? <laughs> you, know, you spray Which at the bottom of the flame, <laughs> not the top. <laughs> Wait, Which that's how you do it? Yeah. Alexa, <laughs> <laughs> how do I put this up? <laughs> kitchen fire, Alexa! Kitchen fire! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Right. What, what if your Alexa's on fire though? <laughs> <laughs> Put it out. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't have to Google to tell you how. Damn. Then what? Society as we know it collapses. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to tree stuff. Back, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> reel it in, y'all. All right, do we want to uh, try giving Dan a call? What Cue form the theme of Dan song. we get? <laughs> Our crows. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta come up with some fresh material. I don't know that uh, that Alexa joke earlier was. Fire. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Corey's cut off. <laughs> what? Come on, that is no worse than yours. Alexa, tell Corey to shut up. <laughs> Hello, Andrew. Hey, Dan. How's it going? Good. Good. Yeah, we're uh, we're talking about kind of how how the internet has changed the industry how it's different really what inspired the episode was kind of talking to you and Tom and some of these guys that have been around a while and really just thinking about coming up and how back in the day there wasn't nearly as much resources and there was a lot of guys that just you know just started out just doing whatever they thought you were saying you spurred and you know people don't know it didn't know how to make a good cut and how it's evolved and how the kind of internet and you know the ability to just you know, find a tutorial on YouTube has changed the game. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't, uh, I mean, I've thought about it a little bit, but I am from the old school. So it's, it's, it's the, the new guys are kind of lucky, you know, you can Google stuff and you got all this stuff. And it's just like, uh, if I had that when I was coming up, I'd, I'd be glued to it and, yeah, you really learn a lot. I was going to really say, kind of lucky. Yeah. I mean, it's like a yeah. very, very large proportional difference. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. You can learn these fantastic things. You don't have to be like, oh, I learned this one thing at the at the comp this one day of the year, you know. I, I remember, uh, I think we talked about it on an earlier episode but having to carry the big like 30 foot wooden ladders around you know before we were using Uh throw ball just the big extension ladders to get up into trees and that sounds so Uh crazy if i try to explain that to somebody (laughs) nowadays they're like you did what (laughs) why would you do that did you hear of a throw ball yet yeah (laughs) I, i got a question dan not including the throw ball uh what do you think the biggest difference has been in the last like 20 years 20 years, yeah, I was foot tail in the 20 years. Yep, yep, or at least yeah. it was for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a big one for sure. I, yeah, because I remember when that came out, and I can't believe that, uh, I can't believe we didn't have the split tail for, for so many years. You know, I used to have to advance to the next, to advance to the next branch. You'd have to untie or not. Oh, and you then, mean the split? T- oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the split tail. It was always one piece of rope. So you have to untie the knot, yep, and then tie it into kind of a little monkey pit because there was some loose rope there. So you had to kind of tie it together to be able to throw it over the next branch and come down, click in, and then <laughs> retie your knot. I mean, what a big waste of time! Oh yeah, yeah. and you would you tie like a little clove hitch on your D ring. So that you'd have a split tail? No, that's more than 20 yeah. years, though, because yeah. when we came on, we had a split yeah, tail. Yeah, that's more than 20. Yeah, yeah that's more than yeah, 20 that's years. Yeah, that's more than 20. I mean, 
But the thing but about it is, for some thing, people, for it's not. But that's yeah. what we started on was the Blake's edge with the split tail. Yeah. 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 And I, I feel like you that's... know that's not that much difference. I don't think between the Blake heads and the Prusik, you know, it's yeah. But yeah. It's yeah. not as much of a difference as between having it split and not having to untie something every time you want oh, to event. Man. Yeah, yeah. Because, I feel like the split because tail. Then you then you ended up going up, up more uh, unsafe because who's going to do that every time? Let's just use my Spider-Man grip and climb to the top and then set my rope. You know. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's a that's a pretty big evolution <laughs> right <laughs> but that was probably more I like remember, 30 25 30 years yeah that's more like 30 yeah. but i remember going up big eucalyptus in hawaii before the split tail and before a lot of stuff and and we were just like up with the flip line i have my line on me but i come to a branch and i take the flip line off and so I have nothing holding me on. <laughs> and then I have to go over that branch and flip the flip line around and then catch it with my other hand. Yeah. Yep, on spurs, yep. yep. Down spurs and keep climbing up. I mean, it's so stupid. Oh, right? my God. As long as you do it really fast, it's so I remember <laughs> missing it, you know, throwing really the landing around and missing it and being oh, like, man. I could die, I could die, I could die. Oh, you know? no. <laughs> And that, that was back when we were using uh, wooden pull saw extensions. Oh, yeah. 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 They were lighter. They were actually well, pretty nice. Except oh, for when it was raining. Then they were way <laughs> heavier. And if there was a knot in it or if the grain was funny at all, it'd uh, break like nobody's oh, yeah. business. Well, it sounds know? really oh. nice in the cold February air to be grabbing wood instead, <laughs> yeah. of, uh, yeah. instead of metal. The grip in the cold is definitely better, but yeah. they're yeah, they're kind but of garbage other than that. We I, didn't have those in Hawaii. We didn't have, I don't remember ever using the wooden one. Do you guys have yeah. bamboo? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, we, we did have some bamboo ones. I don't think, I, I think where I grew up, I don't think we were that much full pruner. We were more saws. Like, I don't even, when I first started, we hardly had a handsaw even. It was a chainsaw. It's more. Wow. It to bite the limbs off. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. I remember going to Costa Rica, and, you know, when I was uh, probably 22, 23, something like that, and, you know, I'd. I'd been climbing for a few years and thinking like, oh man, I wonder if I could get a tree job here climbing trees. You know, there's so many cool trees and I'm uh -huh. driving from the airport to the hotel and I look out the window and there's some kid, you know, that couldn't have been more than 13 years old up the tree and like, you know, grown up on the ground, like pointing, like, go get that branch. And he had a machete, no, no climbing gear, just holding on. Seriously? And he's, yeah, seriously. And he's just hacking branches off with a machete. And I'm like, yep, they're not going to, they're not going to have me yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I cannot compete with that. Let, yeah. me just get my, let me just get my throw ball out. It'll be a minute here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, when you were talking about the, the split tail and how you would spur up and you, you kind of had to have spurs on a lot of trees, I'd imagine to be able to, you know, have something yeah. to stand on to untie. Well, we didn't have, yeah, we, yeah, we didn't have the throw line either. Yeah. When mm -hmm. I started, yeah, when I first heard about uh, the California guys climbing without spurs and whatnot, and how it was the thing, uh, we, we all had a discussion, like, how do you do it? You know, we'd be at a tree, like, well, let's see them do this. You know, how are you going to, you can't climb up there. There's no limbs, you know, yeah. how are you going to uh -huh. climb up there, you know? Yeah. And so, and then, and then the throw line, then I got a, I think we went to a demo with like Bob Weber was a champion. He came out there and he, he showed us the throw line and it was just like, Oh, well that's how you do it. Like I could throw it all the way up to the top of the tree, you know, it's like, then the... he's got no line. It's like the engine in the Industrial Revolution. Yeah. <laughs> it's a throw line in arboriculture. <laughs> well, and even before that, having the split tail, because once you got the split tail, you know, it'd be easier to uh, advance your rope without yeah. fully untying. So you didn't, so being uh, spurred in wasn't as important, mm -hmm. you know, so, so you could, yeah. you know, so it's really fascinating to see how each one of these little changes. Mm -hmm creates another wow. evolution which allows another change yeah, yeah. And it, it all happens so fast it seems 
You know, it's like, oh, I just got the iPhone 7, and then three months later, the iPhone 10 <laughs> came out. <laughs> but it kind of feels that way in this industry sometimes, too. I wonder how long it's going to be until we have electronic harnesses. That's what, yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, there's the Ronin, the, that, uh, the Sunder, the Ronin. Dude, I am waiting for the laser yeah. saw. I am waiting <laughs> for the laser saw. <laughs> the laser saw? Yeah. Oh, that laser you can saw. install into your eyeballs? Oh. <laughs> well, <it laughs> that'll, that'll be version 2.0. Yeah. <laughs> Pack. Yeah, yeah. Don't get crazy. Don't get. Yeah. <laughs> Alexa, <laughs> Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. The tree yeah, this oh. one, I think they've thought of everything. Uh, something else comes out. It's, it's the so <coughs> tree care LA guys are setting uh, lines with drones in their palm trees. No yeah. way, yeah. it's yeah. happening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I could see that in palm trees. Yeah, yeah that makes because sense you there. just go yeah. right up and over, oh, yep. and you're good. Oh, yeah. yeah, I, I hadn't yeah. thought about that, but and that's palm that's trees. Cool. I think are have the highest mortality rates of all trees, like for for tree care workers. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think it's because of the skirts. Yeah, because you're climbing because yeah, they get crushed. Yeah, they'll collapse in on you, yeah. and then they'll suffocate you, Ugh, which is just crazy. Way to go. Shitty way to go. Yeah. Uh-uh. Let's yeah. talk about something else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I hear you. <laughs> so, uh, Dan, what year did you did you start using the throw ball? Oh gosh, that's that's a good question. I I don't know exactly. I would I would say about 1990, somewhere around there. Okay. 1991. Oh wow! Wow, that's when the California guys came out from uh, out to Hawaii and turned you guys on. Yeah, sometime around there, I I, I believe, I believe wow. maybe it was a little earlier, maybe it was late '80s. Yeah, because yeah. we were like yeah. 2000. Yeah, we we didn't use it till 2000. The first couple of years, we just uh, carried ladders to the trees and would set up these big extension ladders into the canopy. Uh-huh. And then once you're in the canopy, then you can flip tail around and uh, get going much easier. But we even we and we talked sure. about it in a different episode, but we even used ladders and hopscotched them up. Using chains to wrap them mm-hmm. on the trunk. Yeah, that's so crazy. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Every time I hear that. And the big furs, yeah. Have, have you seen those old cone-picking ladders? They were really skinny, and they had chains, and they'd link together. Uh, so you guys had a different technology with the ladder stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you went with that. You I, that. I think uh, <laughs> technology <laughs> might be stretching the thing. It they might not be the right room, word. <laughs> yeah. Te- technological regression, maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that's kind of what this is about. You know, all especially back in the day before the internet, different companies didn't get together and hang out a whole lot. Yeah. So you kind of had that what you knew. And we're in, in, in your little bubble. Uh-huh. Yeah, and we're in comb picking yeah. country. And so yeah. that's yeah. just what, you know, we knew, you know. But, and it's interesting because yeah. most tree companies in town spurred back then, you know, and we're talking late 90s, early 2000s. People thought it was weird we didn't spur. They're like, you, you're you going to carry a ladder to the tree? Just put your spurs on and run up it. Hmm. And it's like, I don't uh, know. We've always heard it's bad to spur. Yeah. <laughs> Kind of interesting. Yeah, time. then certain companies, you it would depend on who they hire. Like if they hire, like we hired a guy from California, so that I got a little bit of influence from this guy. We just happened to hire too. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. Kind of like contract yeah. bringing in contract climbers. That's how when I was uh, learning, that's most of what I learned. Like in the early years, was having uh-huh. contract climbers uh-huh. come through and they'll show us little tricks and tips and it'll be like, yeah, okay. That yeah, makes yeah. sense. Yeah. And, and that's kind of how it worked with us. We had, uh, Doug got hired on and he was kind of, he was the top climber in the company when we first got hired or when we got old enough to start, you know, actually getting paid on the clock. <laughs> <laughs> Not just picking cherries. Not just picking cherries <laughs> in the backyard. But, uh, and so, and then when it was when Scott came on, Scott Altenhoff, that we started getting uh, the throw ball yep. and uh, uh-huh. started using the sender. So that that is, I didn't really think about it like that, but it really was, you know, the guy that you hired and brought in and they would share their knowledge with the company. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's happened in, in a lot of times over the years, you know, with the, you know, the rope, with Eric Millard came on and brought the rope wrench and that aluminum bit that we brought to the machine shop and had him build us like, like yeah. the uh, well, fusion, we had rope wrenches before Eric. I know, but that aluminum bit. Yeah, we tether. didn't have the, the yeah. aluminum tether before then. That's true. Yeah, so yeah, that's happened a lot for sure. Yeah. So I think the takeaway well, so you guys far. Got aluminum tethers, you're like, 
Yeah. Yeah. Wait. Yeah, no Wait. Uh, How long ago was that? Uh, that was probably six or seven years ago. Yeah, we we had wow. a machine shop build us aluminum tethers for the rope ranch like seven years ago. Wow. Yeah, yeah I still don't have that. Yeah. Oh, I've got like 20 extra. I'll send you one. <laughs> <laughs> shoot, shoot, uh, send Andrew your address and, and yeah. you'll have one come. We <laughs> we also did a, a, vid- a video for Tree Stuff reviewing the, uh, fu- the notches. They just came out with the fusion tether. Which is an aluminum. It has a built-in pulley. There's a spring where you attach the rope wrench. That way, it keeps your rope wrench in line. It makes it a little smoother. It, it it's a pretty nice. sweet tether. Does it have a little thing that clicks to your like chest harness for keeping it? It has two oh. attachment points. Yeah, it has actually. a couple attachment yeah. points, and one of them's Not actually one. life safety rated, so <laughs> that if you're you know going from one tree to another, you can connect another system to it. It's kind of cool. Nice. Yeah, yeah. All the yeah. fancy gear that's out there, know. you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've gone from advanced climber to you know not advanced climber. Yeah. To, yeah. You know, it's just like it's gone so fast, it's gone right by me. You know, it's just <laughs> it, it happens quick. Six months and keeping yeah. up with this. Exactly. It's just like you know. It's just like cell phones. Like, just like a there's cell nothing phone. wrong with going back to the basics, though. No, I no, know. no. Yeah. No, I mean bare bones. I like it. Yeah. I, I do it all the time. I'll tie a Blake's hitch every now and then and climb on a Blake's hitch just for the fun of it. Corey will make fun of me while I'm doing it. Just, but re- just relentless. I mean, I do it anyway. Yeah, yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Especially fair. How could you not? It, it, yeah, it's just giving you something to make fun of me about. Yeah, just more ammunition. It's just more ammunition. <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, that's the way to do it. I love I, I love uh, Foot Lock, and they've got that ascender that kind of comes in at a nine, about a 90-degree angle, I think. Mm-hmm. So you can kind of hold the handles at an angle. Oh, that that is oh, sweet. Yeah, I'm so jealous of that. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I threw my prostic on. I keep a prostic on my belt still for foot locking up. And I threw it on the other day, and this this uh, lady we had hired. She was only hired for a couple of weeks. She was on her way through, but she was like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> 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 like, like, up into this. like, what? She had never seen it before. You know, so it's like. <laughs> crazy it went from i remember doing it and having people going what are you doing like i was so advanced and now i do it and people are what are you doing i'm so behind it came and left <laughs> yeah that's how it goes sometimes i guess but we all. Yeah. yeah it's quick i'm gonna bring it uh, to competitions for the arrow rescue i feel like that's just such a quick way to get in the tree oh yeah throw the prusik on have an, uh, oh, yeah. another system hanging Boom. off it you're up and tie yep. it, spike it, and that. you're good to go. Yeah, yeah, it's the way to yep. do it. Hey, hey, Dan, do you remember the first time I used uh, single rope in a competition? What I think you were one of the judges, and it must have been like 2006 in Portland, somewhere around yeah. then. And I had it kind uh-huh. of a funky setup. And I remember, I remember take, uh, talking to Terry and being like, "Hey, Terry, I, I'm going to try this single rope uh, thing in the aerial rescue." And he was like, what are you talking about? And so he had me show him how to, like, anchor it at the base. And then I, I basically ran up, and then I I totally missed the setup and got – I ended up having to come down. Uh, I timed out. Like, I didn't get the dummy down. Uh-huh. Do you remember that? No, I don't. Oh, dang it. Yeah, I, it. I, it might come to me later as soon as one little piece of it comes and I get it all, but I can't. <laughs> yeah, no, is is before before I knew you, other than just like that guy with the really cool flamed hard hat that's yeah, doing the judging. <laughs> um, but I remember uh, going up and coming down and just being discouraged because I tried something new and it just did not. It worked good. The climbing, I got up real fast, but then. Uh, yeah. I, I didn't go far enough up, and then the the setup I got uh, was just super bush league. It was like one ascender above me, a French prussic on my harness, and then a foot ascender. And so I just lift the uh-huh. foot ascender and ad- advance the two things, or the, the French prussic uh-huh. and the other one. And then I tried tying a knot between the ascender and the French prussic, and I was just having trouble getting the slack and getting the knot tied. But uh-huh. I remember, yeah. like, getting down and being bummed and uh, – you came over and you're like, that was really fast, man. And it was like, all right, I'm doing a little better if, if Dan came over and just gave me a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> but 
Yeah. Yeah, I bet it was really fast getting up there. Yeah. Well, and it was back before yeah, people were climbing on sing, uh, single rope. So, you know, a lot of people uh -huh. said it was the first time they'd seen single rope. And so it was, you know, it was kind of, it, it was one of those times where all of a sudden people started paying attention because there was some weirdo doing something different. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah, and, and he flies out there. It's like, whoa, did you see that guy's on the ground? Now he's all the way up in the top. You know, it's just <laughs> yeah. an eye opener. Yeah. Yep, that, that, was a, that was a fun one. Sweet, do you have any th other things you want to uh, say about kind of the evolution and, you know, education of the arborist community? Well, you know, I, I, I can't think of anything. I don't seem like I'm the, I'm the expert on that. I'm trying to catch up with everyone. I want to listen to what other people are saying. I was actually listening to, you know, this podcast has got me more on the internet. Oh, cool. Too, just talking with you guys. So it's kind of, you're kind of pulling me, pulling me up, you know, it's like, I gotta be. Sorry. What's going on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pulling you up, pulling you down. Depends on the episode, you know. <laughs> so so Dan, how, I got a question. How are the Doug Furs doing farther north in Washington? Are they are you getting any kind of drought stress and dieback or are are they looking it's, pretty healthy? It's not so bad with the Doug Furs. It's the western red cedars that are oh. flagging this mystery. Are they yeah, like full on really dying out or are they flagging dying. and getting cankers or dying. wow. No, they're not getting cankers. They're just looking like drought stress. Like all of a sudden, they just—is it the root rot? Year, or two years. You know, they don't know. They're kind of researching it because it—it looks like drought, but then people even that are, uh, got irrigation are still having theirs die, and they're just—you know, they I, just go yeah, I heard I heard something about the western red cedars and how uh, there there was some people wanting. Um, uh, to be informed if people were seeing like some flagging trees or areas where uh, multiple trees really flagging out, but I, I wasn't hearing about like uh, die off kind of like we've been having with the Doug Furs. I didn't know you're gonna having so much problem with Doug Furs down there. Oh yeah, the yeah. the drought stress I think has been really causing a lot of problems, and yeah, the beetles man. come in, and and I've been actually doing yeah, some. Man. Some kind of looking into it, and um, there there's some some different kind of means of uh, putting some hormones out there, pheromones that'll attract the beetles and and make it to where they're not uh, going after the trees and going into these traps. But it's been kind of one of the interesting things that I've been learning about is more the bark beetles and the yeah uh, you know identifying them based on their galleries and and you know it seems like that's kind of the final straw on a lot of a lot of yeah. trees that are suffering and and then you know they become more susceptible and then they actually die because the beetles get them so that's been something i've been yeah. interested in and and kind of looking into and yes, uh, well you guys just got a froze right now but <laughs> yeah i was gonna say you know it's not freezing the bugs too so much too yeah. right aren't they surviving these more I, not getting uh, a hard freeze. Yeah, I think we're not uh, getting as hard of a freeze as we used to in the past as much, and I think that's – I've heard that's part of the reason the bronze birch borer has moved oh, yeah. in so hard is because Remember. it's not getting that hard freeze. And and, uh, and we're getting those weird weather events that cause all these failures in trees, and, the, you know, that's an opening yeah. for an insect to kind of just burrow in there, like yeah. defeat oh, the tree's yeah, defenses, yeah. and it just – there it is. So how, how, are the, how are the big leaf maples looking? Are they getting big seed crops and, and small leaves and – and it looking like they're not so robust or there's there's a mixture i don't know uh the overall big picture i know there's there's a mixture that i've been dealing with and and mm -hmm. uh, i've gone to some clients where one will be fine and one will be looking peakish at the same place lead. yeah at the same place We'll we'll get that uh, in the street trees here. There'll be a, a big leaf maple that's having a real hard time, and next to it will be uh -huh. a uh, one that's checking out. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. know it, it. It's weird. I or again, I think fine. it's it's water, or or one, sorry, one doing good uh -huh. and one not doing. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what I mean. And, and even yeah. on that that place I just bought, there is there's a shit ton of just dead standing uh, big leaf maple, but then there's a few of them that are just going insane, like just going crazy. Wow, it's interesting. Yeah. I wonder yeah. if I wonder if like uh, what the best means of addressing that is like doing a soil kind of 
uh, fertilization, maybe with like biochar and good stuff. Or uh, my theory is it's uh, the lack of rainfall in the winter. You know, people think about the hot summers mm-hmm. and the drought in the summer, but we have a lot less rainfall here than we did in the winter. And that's when the trees, you know, the trees are used to having a bit of a drought in the summer, but in the winter they're used to getting soaked. Right. And we're not getting those big soaking rains that are lasting a month. You know, if we get a couple mm. days in a row, it feels like a rainstorm. I kind of think it's just going to be culling some of that genetic material, some of the weaker stock that has been used to that uh, winter rainfall oh. more consistently, and maybe they're just going to start dying. Mm. I mean, it's just, you know, natural selection doing its thing. They're just mm. going to start dying out, and the, the robust ones, it'll, it'll, it probably won't happen over our lifetime, but those robust ones will then take over as the new dominant species, and that it's just going to be the new way it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, uh, Dan, are you having, uh, do you have storm work going on in Seattle right now? No, we didn't. We didn't have a problem at all. We just had uh, a weekend of heavy snow. We got about six inches of heavy snow, and but then it got warm. It didn't all freeze. Yeah. And so it's all gone now. Yeah, we're good here, but Salem, Portland, that it, whole area is just slammed right like now. A, it looks like a fucking war zone, man. It is bad. Yeah. <laughs> wow, well, they got they got the ice, right? The yeah. frozen ice. Yeah, the I was. Um, I responded to a, a friend's some friend's work up in Salem, and it was Sunday, and I think it had hit Friday or Thursday, and there was still probably mm-hmm. a quarter of an inch of uh, just an ice sheet on these trees. Oh, we so, went up there, and and there were twigs where it's still like the full circumference of ice and it was over an inch thick. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was it was it bad. was it was really intense. Yeah. We went up and did some storm work up there actually and I had I had pulled some trees off houses with cranes and did some pretty interesting fun uh storm work. <laughs> <laughs> it always is, isn't it? Oh man. Yeah. Right on. Well yeah. uh oh, storm work. Hate it. Yeah, and you know what? Yeah, we'll do an episode on that as well. There's uh, especially right. with everything going on, I might have to start putting one together sooner than later because I know it's yeah. on a lot of people's next minds. Week. Very topical. Yeah, yeah. It heck, yeah. it might be next week. Yeah. It really might. <laughs> um, Scott, no. Well, okay, great talking to you guys. It, it's always great having you on, Dan. Always a I'm I'm glad to hear that you're great. listening to the show and enjoying it. Um, yes, and uh, we look forward to next week. See you next week. All right. Sounds good. See you. Thanks, Dan. Take care. Bye. It's always great getting his perspective. You know, it's, uh, that guy's got, uh, decades of experience and yeah, yeah. It's always, always great talking to him. Since before the Blake's hitch. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Before, before the, (laughs) screw the Blake's hitch, before the split tail. Yeah. Before the split tail. Here we go. Well, that, yeah, yeah, that's right. The split tail. Yeah. Cause cause I think he started on the tot line. I think is what he started. The monkey fist, yeah. The mo- the monkey, yeah. Yeah. The Dan, the myth, the legend. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> that conversation T- kind of showed like the importance of community and being able to learn from others because you were all of a sudden asking him about what the trees are doing in his region and yeah, um, I got you know he was curious about what's going on here and <laughs> that's it, just reaching out to people and and that's how it works and that's what you know a big part of what we've talked about a couple times is you know doing this podcast was a way to reach out and kind of build some community in a time that it, that was a a little bit harder and that shows it just that conversation mm-hmm. you know sharing knowledge up and down the coast like that Man, all right what a great community to be a part of just to be able to like pick each other's brains not really have ego involved too much it's just like Asking questions like, what's going on up in your neck of the woods? What's going on down there? It's, yeah. yeah. It's awesome. like, no, the firs aren't doing bad, but the cedars are. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's just every every time one of those things happens in the arborist community, I'm just, I'm reassured that this is, I love being here. I love you being know, a part of this. I think the common trend is that uh, at the end of the day, everyone just really likes trees <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so it's like eh, i can you know we can disagree on certain things and do things our own way and whatnot but at the end of the day as long as we're all kind of like yeah fuck yeah trees fuck yeah trees yeah sterling's gonna eat a dick but trees are great <laughs> 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 even i was th- kind of thinking about it today like why is there like the camaraderie you know yeah mm-hmm. like you can just walk up to any tree person and, and, you know, there's something in common there. And I think it's like more than love of trees because some people don't. They just want to cut them down. Right. Um, it's like we go to work and we do this crazy job, you know, 
climbing trees with chainsaws and not everyone experiences that. So you meet someone else who has, and you have this weird, like, you know, it's this, it's this odd kinship. Yeah. A brotherhood, I, I, I noticed that with yeah. my buddy, uh, Dave McNeil, he's a firefighter uh-huh. and paramedic. And, um, you know, we did some traveling and he would see other firefighters that are in a different state. Obviously he doesn't know them. Yeah. You know what I mean? But he'd be like, Hey, you know, I, I, I'm a firefighter. I work in Eugene. Yeah. yeah. Like, hey, right on, man. You know, cool. Good to meet you. And, and it's kind of that same camaraderie because they they go into challenging situations and have really intense experiences and can relate to each other. And, yeah. you know, when they see someone else that does what they're doing, they're like, wow, that's that's a freaking badass. Yeah, right we, got, there. we got something <laughs> to talk about. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, having that that bond that we all kind of have, like it's easy to reach out to someone, you know, yeah. up in Seattle or someone on the East yeah. coast, yeah. you know, whatever. Yeah. And cause you got something to talk about. That's, that's for true. sure. That's true. Yeah. Or you have something in common that's Ex- kind of special and most people don't share. Yeah. 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 So the, the, yeah, the internet's a great way to expand that network and talk to everybody, you know, you know, I think a big part of that also is just having the right mentality of trying to make today a little better than yesterday mm-hmm. or just make it to tomorrow <laughs> yeah or just make it tomorrow <laughs> yeah just make it through one more step, one more step. <laughs> sometimes that's what you're thinking up there is like just come on get me out of this tree <laughs> just once one, that tops out i'll be good <laughs> one more one more limb one more top we're almost there one more chip. yeah <laughs> the discussion kind of went on in a little different direction than we were planning but i love it when it does that be, you know it kind of it throws off the outline a little bit yeah. But it 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 kind of gets to the core of what I think the spirit is a little bit more it when comes we do back. it. You know, Dan uh, on the phone was talking about. He's like, "Oh, and these guys from California came down, and they were showing me this and that." And it's like even before the internet or before there were webinars and yeah, it just showed that there it yeah. was much harder. Like yeah. you had to have someone yeah. from California randomly exactly. come and show you what a throw ball <laughs> was. Like yeah. at the time, may have been happenstance or just like yeah. a. a non sequitur but now it's like you can just seek that you mm-hmm. can you can be like i wonder yeah. about you know hmm. yeah it used to how, be how do you come up climb a palm tree i've never uh, seen a palm yeah tree. <laughs> it used to be where Lucky. um you really had to have mentors to be teaching you even even if you had a lot of drive and you had a lot of initiative and were you know gung-ho about becoming the best arborist you can mm-hmm. be you were still limited yeah, and not able to get the knowledge. But now that the internet has come out, you get out of it what you put into it yeah. and you don't have a limiter. Mm-hmm. There's, there's no limiting factor in terms of what's available to you to learn. It, and, and I've, I've seen that it used to be that, uh, we would, we would say, Hey, it takes five years to become a fully trained arborist. You know, if you dedicate yourself and dedicate your life to the trade for five years, you're, you're very likely going to be fully trained. But then now I'm like watching, watching these people come on. I'm like within six months, they know all the Latin names of the trees. Yeah, yeah. They know all the knots <laughs> They they got everything except experience within like six months or a year. Yeah. Well, you know, from zero to a hundred compared to what we were doing, it was with, crazy. We're almost Which, androids now. We have, this, <laughs> we have the whole world like, yeah. right here, this extension right of our hand, Which, you know, the phone. Yeah, which there is a huge caveat to that. I think that, yes, it's it's great that they have all that knowledge. They, it's great that they know all those knots, but that experience, I I know, I, I, I know. See, I would be I'm with very, you on this. And one, I tell Corey. him, I tell I him, I'm like, too. climb on yeah. the Blake's hitch. The thing you know, is, learn the Blake's hitch first. Just hold yourself back. <laughs> Just yeah. hold yourself. It, back. it still <laughs> takes that time because what it is is you've got to, you've got to, you can learn it and see the video and understand the the terminology and be able to explain how to set up a climbing system, mm-hmm. but you have to do that system and the, you know, or climb on that system. And then you got to climb on that system in a conifer. You got to mm-hmm. climb on it on a big yeah. wide spreading tree. You got to climb on it when it's wet. You got to climb on it on a really hot day. You know, you got to experience all these different conditions that change it. Mm-hmm. You, you know, maybe climb on it with this type of press cord and climb on it with this different hitch. And, you know, and so, uh, I think there's a huge head start by being able to learn all that stuff, mm-hmm. but I, there's no replacement for good experience. Well, well there's no, 
substitute for um, a mentorship, like training. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Training. no, absolutely. Well, like, and yeah. like for for me, I'm relatively new here <laughs> in this whole like crazy world. <laughs> but we all are. I'm fresh. Yeah. I I learn new stuff all the time. If you stop taking having that attitude, then exactly. you're in trouble. But the thing is, like I I and I consider um, like every single one of you. It to different extents, a mentor of mine, you know, and um, when, you know, when I'm making coffee and eggs in the morning and I put on a webinar, mm-hmm. I can tune out. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. I can be like, mm, it's been 15 minutes and I've been paying attention and now I'm like, I'm lost. Whereas if you're there and you're doing it and you, that's like, you scheduled this whole seven hours to do a job and you want to do it right and you want to learn and soak it up you have no choice but to actually yeah. figure mm-hmm. that shit out your mentor yeah. is going to make sure that you don't miss the most important part exactly. where when you're watching a web webinar and you get distracted you might have missed the most important part <laughs> yeah. Yeah. oh you know have it. to stay <laughs> tied in twice oh. yeah. uh, i was uh, i was trying to watch uh, alex shigo gave a little webinar on code it i've been like uh-huh. this. And and I I had to rewind it three times. Oh yeah, yeah. just in the first like seven minutes because I'm like I'm here I'm like like here the lights are on but no one's home you know and I yeah. just like constantly rewind. I finally got it, but <laughs> just I feel like if if I had been if I had had the honor to talk to Alex Shago in person, <laughs> yeah. right? Then I might have uh, hmm. it, I, I might have gotten it the first time he said it to me. I wish yeah. you were here last <laughs> week when we were talking to Tom Dunlop because he was talking about Alex Shago uh, oh, seminars yeah. that he was at and conversations oh, wow. he was having with him and whatnot. So wild, yeah, uh, yeah. I do miss that. Yeah, because well, I, yeah. you know, uh, we'll we'll be talking about Shago many more times, and no it sounded doubt. like Tom was stoked to come on again sometime. So so oh. so wait a minute, who's who's Shago? <laughs> who's, yeah. who's this guy? Yeah. <laughs> Never heard the name. It, yeah. Maybe maybe an important point to make is not to just, you know, the bad parts of just seeing stuff on the internet, right? Don't yeah. just exactly. see some technique and go try it, you know? I, I've got a story. <laughs> I've got a story around that. So the uh, the, the Munter Hitch. So it's it um, one of my, one of the people who taught me how to climb, uh, he taught one of his people how to climb on a monster hitch and he, he showed him this technique and he was like yeah don't use it it's kind of dangerous and whatever and the 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 climber used that fell out of the tree and broke his back and Whoa. It's been permanently altered like his his life has been permanently altered from that and that's again that's just one of those things if you don't have this experience if you jump into that you can be shown a technique and it might be shown to you wrong or it might be shown by somebody who he doesn't grasp what they're showing yeah, you. Can to you can put a pressing back up on it. Exactly. Okay. The yeah. climber yeah. Who, who showed you <laughs> is the one who fell out. No, no, no. The 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 climber, one of the climber's previous uh, proteges okay. fell out of the tree. So th- this climber was the one who showed both me and this other climber this technique, and then this other climber fell out of the tree using the munter, and he oh. just probably mistied it. I, I don't know what exactly happened, but well, well the munter, well, if, if you, you just let, let go, go, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, Man. a good, a good uh, uh, same vein, you know, consider yeah. the source and you want to. Yeah, it's maybe even just like, don't look at the internet while you're learning. Yeah. You know? yeah. Well, get those, get those basics. Yeah. That's, yeah, it's, it's a tough. tough one. I don't know what's better. I mean, it, it depends on the person. I think that some people are, you know, it's, they're made to learn in person. Mm-hmm. Other people can learn on their own on the internet. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, every, everybody has their own style of learning. Like, you know, they say that there's like visual learners, there's auditory learners, there's, uh, yeah. uh, you know, hands-on learners. Mm-hmm. Every, everybody learns a little bit differently. Yeah. I remember uh, learning, like, obviously I grew up in the YouTube, Instagram era, but I remember learning, like moving rope system, kind of getting comfortable on that. And then I would go look at a climbing arborist video where he's doing some weird lowerable base anchor and it didn't make sense to me yet so i'm not I'm just not going to try it you know yeah mm-hmm. and it i mean eventually you do all this stuff and just over time it makes sense to you and uh you can do it but yeah i guess i had that in my head where i'm like 
uh, this doesn't quite make sense to me. That's a little too complicated. Maybe I won't do this. Well, and I hey, think, wow, you actually showed some common sense. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. It, <laughs> probably it, why you're still alive. It goes to I'll know just your sources. For compliments. <laughs> 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 not an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> not an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> just stamp that on your forehead. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, well, for me, I had seen so many people tie a base anchor in you know various different ways but i'm like the most basic you know you don't like need a bunch of you know all you really need is just the end of your rope to really tie a decent base acre yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. and so i was like okay that's what i'm gonna do because i'm poor and here <laughs> here we go and it's it'll work um and i had seen people do it many many times and then it wasn't until i was like okay i'm gonna watch a video of someone it's the video is specific to how to tie a base anchor for SRT mm-hmm. with no equipment aside from your rope. And then I went out to a tree in my yard and just like, you know, tossed it over. And I, I remember just like play, pause, play, nice. pause yep. every yeah. single like That's I was like, OK, it. well, That's like, a big one. The base right anchor. handed. Yeah. I'm going to be right handed if I, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then I got it and I remember just being like, Ta-da! Yeah. so what'd you tie? I just did a running bowling. Nice. Yeah. Um, and then I figured out how to do a bowling on a bite. Yeah. You know, and nice. then that's like most of what I use anymore for SRT just because like I don't have. That's the way to do it, though. You weren't at work, right? You just went. out. No, just, I was yeah. at home and yep. I was like, I'm going to get this so that the next time I'm at work, I don't have to be like, oh, somebody help me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you do the Yosemite on it? I do. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Nice. I'll either do the Yosemite or I'll like just take a carabiner and uh Clip it so that it there's like no spike way. It, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that, that, that's it's a all, great way to do it. That's all unnecessary. You just need a clove hitch. That's all you need. <laughs> <A clove hitch. laughs> yeah. Don't listen I to don't Corey. Know anymore. You just <laughs> okay. so that goes back to what I was saying earlier. Know your sources. Yeah. Don't listen to Corey. Right. Yeah. Don't, don't just go to random people on the internet. <laughs> listen to the. What uh, about a clove hitch with the stopper knot? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm putting it Spikes out there. It's still redundant. You just need the club. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, like with, with some things. I, I think you better use uh, something other than a club <laughs> hitch. <laughs> do, not, do, not act, do not actually climb on a club. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Climbing on a club hitch is a bad idea. Only if you're on Dynaglide. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, then it works even better. Exactly. Because uh, the Dynaglide just plays perfectly with the club hitch. Use a munter. Yeah. Yeah. Use yeah, a mon- mon- use a mon- <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Basil time mon- <laughs> 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 That's what I'm talking about. You gotta go real fast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But for some things it's Damn way it, better rope again. doing it in person <laughs> redundantly in front of someone who's very patient and like will is willing to be like, Oh, you did that wrong. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like or here, let me show you know, like a bowl it, it took me for like way longer than I want to admit to be like this is how you tie a bow, and this is how you, you know, the knots thing. Yeah, and if you're not quite, you know, like feeling like you know what's going on, put a uh, put a uh, uh, fisherman's on the yeah. end of the bowling. Oh. Yeah, you know? or, yeah, just and that's the thing too. If you don't know knots, tie lots. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, back it up with backups, and then back those backups with backups. I'm just sometimes like a chain of figure eights, whatever. Like, <laughs> <laughs> did you get the thing where uh, when I started, I learned the run and bowl, and I'm like, I know how to do this. But mm-hmm. then you get up in the tree, and you're like, Oh, how how does this? Oh not man, work? you have you're no like, idea. Not now. Yeah, not I, not now. Now. <laughs> <laughs> I am. All I'm I can think about is cat videos right now. That's all I'm <laughs> right. This is bad. Yeah. I'm left handed. Alexa, so. run it bowling. <laughs> <laughs> but it, so I'm left handed. So if I don't like, if I don't put the tail to in my left hand, uh-huh. I'm I don't know yeah, what yeah, to do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. which yeah it comes with its own set of of issues. Mm-hmm. But it just goes back to like. You know, there's so many ways to do oh, all like sorts of things that ways we to do, tie a bowl you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And so it's like it's uh, in some aspects you can get information overload if you really like sink your teeth into all of the online resources as opposed to like what with we were talking about earlier. If you just have a mentor who's like, this is how you tie the alpine butterfly, you put it around your hand, you know. 
or this is how, you know, you learn one or two ways to do the things that you need to do and then you just stick with them as opposed to, well. Well, then you can evolve. Once you get yeah. like proficient at that, then right. take to the internet and be like, oh, that's a sweet little and thing. Like, like a, I hate how that hitch works. Like, uh, I'm going to check this out. Like, yeah. oh, that's really sweet. You know, there's yeah. a sweet spot, though, I think. Or it's a, not a sweet spot, but it's a thin line mm -hmm. between knowing what works one way that you learn it and then venturing out into the unknown. Yeah. Yeah. I say just get real comfortable with that one way, you know, mm -hmm. then you'll know what you don't like and you could Google those fixes. Yep. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. And, and you know, there is a million different uh, Instagram sites yeah. that just teach not after not. I'm, I can't mm -hmm. remember the name of the one I follow. Knots and cues is a good one. Knots and cues is good. Yeah, yeah. that might be it. And but there's Grogs, <coughs> right? Yeah. Grogs, yeah. Grogs, Grogs is a good one. Grogs. And I've actually got a free app on my phone. Yeah, you can find apps that will, like, walk you through an animation mm -hmm. of how to tie it that you can for fast forward and rewind it. Yep. There's some yeah. really cool ones out there. The one I like to use is just called Useful Knots, and it's an oh, awesome. Oh, that's a good one, that's yeah. It's an awesome app. It has, it, like, it breaks down every single knot, like, picture for each step. It's, yeah, it's awesome. And it tells you, you know, what that knot is, if, if it's, if you shock load this knot, if it, you can actually break the knot or if it's not shock loadable and yeah, life support. It's, it's pretty cool. Nice. 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 That might be a good one to share on our social medias. Yeah. You know, yeah. Speaking of, uh, uh apps that are good for tree people, um, log weight pro will, oh. uh, calculate the weight of, Green uh, logs. wood based on the species and the wow. diameter and the That's length. Cool. Log so weight pro. I'm Googling that right Yeah, look yeah. up log weight pro, download it, and when you're doing your next crane job, you will feel a lot more confident yeah, yeah. in or making even that just cut. Yeah. For rigging, that's super I've always useful. seen the chart, you know, a little piece of paper, but yeah, yeah that's handy. Oh yeah. Nice. Log weight pro is, is where it's at for sure. All right, one more time. Log, log weight pro. Yep. All right. Log weight. Yep, everybody's all on their phones already. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty awesome. Wait, oh, nice. sorry, we're in the middle of a podcast. Right now. Oh. Alexa. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Alexa, download Logweight Pro. I was she listening knows to a different podcast. <laughs> 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 sorry, what? <laughs> um, nice. Yeah, but it it's, and also it's great that there are apps and websites and Instagram pages and like sites like Tree Stuff and podcasts like this and many others that it, it just goes to show how uh excited and willing people are to share their ideas and like their expertise and what works for them and i think that's how we kind of get into this maybe, the evolution yeah. that we're kind of maybe it's about. worth saying like what are the big ones that i i learned from maybe you learned from or all of us have learned from mm -hmm. just for people who are just getting into it like where do you go to learn this stuff okay Segway here back to Logway Pro. Okay. Have <laughs> Pacific U on here. Oh, wow. when, the, when the fuck are you going to be rigging out a Pacific U? Yeah, we got this, a big Pacific U pick. We got to take over the building. This is incredible. You <laughs> never know. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. Probably pretty heavy. You know, a little bit goes a long way. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I tell my wife all the time. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Everyone what? takes a sip of beer. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, where were we? Yeah. We were talking about you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you just got a new nickname. Uh, <laughs> Rob just broke the podcast with that. <laughs> you got to go. <laughs> That's yeah. all I have to offer. Yeah. <laughs> just gotta walk away. Uh, but yeah, no, Jamie, uh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah fire, fire. Serious up. stuff, okay. Yeah, yeah we're yeah. talking about... <laughs> I was thinking of mentioning places, like good resources to go to, like if you're just getting into this, where do you go find this stuff? Yeah. Reliable, trusted stuff. I think Climbing Arborist podcast. Definitely. Climbingarborist.com. Yep. Sure, go there. It's mm -hmm. more than a podcast. He's, he's got tons of videos on everything. Yeah, that, that educated climber. That That's was the one I was going to throw out there. One. That's a great one. I Jamie's learned a lot. Gonna I'm just gonna keep going. The ones. I learned a lot from <laughs> August Hunnicky. Yep. Going up. Yeah. yeah. You know, a lot of his Classic. stuff now is crane videos, but I mean, if you go back in his catalog, he's he's got some great rigging videos. Mm -hmm. 
And Reg Coates is probably my favorite right now. He's really droney and dry, but that guy is a master. Yeah. <laughs> no, he, he knows what he's doing. It, again, yeah. Yeah. nothing against him. His his videos are all just super long. Oh, but yeah. you learn the entire time you're, you're, you're oh, watching. He's, yeah. he's, he's incredible. Yeah. Well, and just the amount of information you can get from the Tree Stuff web, webinar series. Yeah. Yep. All their webinars, all the videos we were talking about earlier. I mean, there's just so much information there to be consumed they just did one on span rigging did you guys catch it we i haven't seen it yet the taylor hamill yeah not mark hamill i was gonna say (laughs) mark (laughs) (laughs) i referred to taylor hamill as mark hamill in one of the podcasts (laughs) (laughs) which is luke skywalker Skywalker. yeah (laughs) i hope we i hope we have him on so we can refer to him as luke i got a little tip on rigging um we were doing a crane job uh oak on the house just a couple days ago and you know, we just got, the, we just actually got a crane truck at Sperry like six months ago. So we got these rigging chains to put on the end. It's a knuckle boom. So you basically just move the hydraulics around and that's what picks the wood up, not a cable. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we've got chains on the end of the boom that we rig onto the tree and they're rated at like 8,000 pounds. Mm-hmm. And I did the log weight pro. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, it's probably in the 7,000 pound range, I'm guessing. And everything's rated at 7,000. So I hooked up my chains. And then uh, after I after we rigged it out, I asked the crane guy. He was like, yeah, it was right around seven. You were just about right. And then the this guy, Wes, that was helping out on the job for Forcelin and working for Forcelin, he's like, actually, we were stress testing those chains pretty hard. It wasn't the breaking strength. It was the will at like 7,400. But because we spread them out, you know, we basket tied it and spread it at probably like a 60 degree angle. Oh. That that put way more stress way on more those stress. chains. Huh. Yeah. You know, so yeah. Uh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I was thinking in my mind, you know, I it, we're in store mode. I'm just blasting through the job and I'm yeah. like, oh, 7,400 pound test chains, you know, the piece is coming out around seven. This is Will. Yeah. So, you know, the, the rating is at what you can pretty much do whatever you want with it. Yeah. Will, yeah. the working load limit. Yeah. And not whatever you want, but yeah. you can work with it. And, right, right. uh, but then I didn't take into consideration basket tying it at an angle. Yeah. Yeah. So that the working load limit is just the chain just laying straight down. Ground. Just, just, yep. Yeah. That's just it. straight yeah. down, right. not at any angle. So when you're, when you're basket tying the lower, the, the steeper, the angle, the more, uh, you're going to be putting on your anchors or your tie offs where, where yep. you're choked off. Yeah. Like you could look at the brakes, just like you're saying, I don't know why I'm repeating yeah. it, but yeah, with yeah. ropes, you know, totally, the same yeah, totally. thing. Like you have a span rigging set up, like that's, yep. you're not going to be able to pick that, that working load limit, you know, on that because of the angles and all the stress and everything. So stuff to think about. Luke yeah. Skywalker has well, a West. great webinar on, uh, <laughs> is that, is on is that before like or after? Walker. Walker. <laughs> yeah, Tree Walker has a great uh, <laughs> webinar. On uh, okay. the, oh my god, Corey's uh, high fiving me for fun. That was a good one. Nice <laughs> on how the different one. angles <laughs> change <laughs> the loads. Oh, yeah. What What was the name of that, Jamie? Do you remember? Um, his rigging load. Yeah. So honored. Yeah. <laughs> rigging theory. Uh, rigging theory. Yeah. Either way, watch all those webinars. One of them will tell you all kinds of great information. The, the, the on one it. from Taylor Hamill. It's great. Yeah. Well, he's got a bunch of them. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't Taylor Hamill who did that one. It was somebody else, right? No, it was who, him. Who did the rigging? The it, advanced rigging thing? Yeah, because it that was. That was Taylor Hamill. I'm looking at it right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's number 121. Well, Alexa has all the answers. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it is. Yeah. I was uh, actually looking at a list of webinars because I saw one on work positioning uh, that I enjoyed, and I remembered the fellow's first name was Gra- uh, Craig, sorry, but I couldn't remember his last name, so I was looking it up. It's Bachman, I believe. Yeah, he's uh, yeah, up yeah. in Seattle. He he's is awesome. great. Oh, man. It's like, it's it's so easy to watch. Yeah. You know how I was like talking about Alex Shigo earlier and how I just like, I was just like, my brain just stopped. I'm like, I'm buttering toast now. I'm not. Yeah. Um, but this, this got me. I was like, man, I'm, yeah. He's a really cool guy. He, he does a lot of the judging at the competitions. Yeah. So, yeah. I've, you know, by no means would I say I know him, but I've had a couple no, conversations and he just comes off 
just as enthusiastic yeah. and stoked on tree work when you're just talking to him at a competition as he does doing a oh, webinar just, for tree stuff. It's so compelling to to watch and easy to listen to and and useful information. And that I I know for me personally, I struggle a lot with uh, work. That's like my thing I'm trying to work on is my work positioning because like 90% of being a good climber is work positioning and being comfortable yeah in the tree and then and there there were just some good tips in there so that's been that's been one of my mm, big win resources yeah. and he did mention too uh i think jamie said so in a in a previous podcast but uh putting your lanyard on your lower d's yeah yeah um which jamie told me that and i'm like yeah whatever shut up <laughs> <laughs> it's just jamie consider the source <laughs> yeah, yeah know your sources i'm just kidding i i listened to it when jamie told me but when when uh craig bachman said that in that webinar i was like uh-huh <laughs> it's not just jamie <laughs> so, so now i know it's legit <laughs> just kidding sorry i didn't mean to roast about? you so yeah. i was talking about craig bachman in the work positioning webinar that oh, i yeah, yeah. that i had watched uh from tree stuff and how that was one of my favorite recent endeavors into the resource pool of the internet that is provided to us but um yeah and then like i said earlier grog's knots it's been good for me. Yeah. Um, I feel and like just Facebook groups too, honestly. Yeah. And understanding like the, the right pace. We talked about that a little bit, I think last podcast or whatnot. And I think that's really important. And a good pace is a comfortable one. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So if you can move quickly and be comfortable, then you can probably move quickly and that's a appropriate pace. Yeah. But if you're trying to go fast and you're uncomfortable, you should probably slow down a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I would I would caution even against that. Even if you're moving I've I've made mistakes even when I'm moving quickly and I feel totally comfortable. Like this is something I've done a thousand times. I'm just moving quickly and I'm like, ah, I'm just gonna just crush this. It's just gonna go so fast. And then I make a mistake. I'm I do something boneheaded and I'm just like kicking myself for the rest of the day just because. Like, why did I make the face cut under the strap? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've always liked slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, yeah. That's one that I, I've always enjoyed as well. It's, it's uh, the first time I heard it was on, we were going to Boise. That to, was Rick Faber. Yeah, Rick Faber. Yeah. He, uh, <laughs> me and him were going to Boise to go to the ISA PNW competition as, as climbing. And so we were just sitting driving. And he was saying, yeah, in the Marines, we had a saying, slow is steady and steady is fast. Mm -hmm. And so I remember going up to the footlock and just being like, all right, slow is steady and steady is fast. And I tried to embody that as I did it. And this probably, I think I got it, I did 20 seconds, and that's the fastest one I've done in a competition. Nice. I thought you were going to say, and I never made it off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Timed out. Yeah, the judge was just sitting there like, you can go anytime you want. <laughs> Just looked over. He's Slow is steady. Me. This is really fast. Steady is fast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost there in my mind. <laughs> I just picture a sloth climbing around. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to picture it. We've climbed together a lot right. of times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, can you guys think about anything else? Uh, that would, I mean, we're kind of off the topic and we're, so much, we're like kind of, but tangent you know, I, I also in late, like what's the title of the episode? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that that might've been something good to open with. Yeah. 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 All right. Let's All right. Re replay you want the, the intro? <laughs> okay. <laughs> we're going to replay the intro. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Shh. <laughs> The tree work industry is full of amazing people. We are a mosaic of college-educated, internet research, trial and error, skill passed down through mentorship, knowledge shared over a beer, and good old-fashioned self-taught. How did you get where you're at? I need another beer. And where are you going? Even if you've been doing this work for a decade, there's always something else to learn. And when you start teaching... It might just take your learning to another I level. A After all, open a beer young with. world, the world is yours. On this episode of the Tree Thinking Podcast, we do some research into trial and error. Look at the benefits of self-taught and mentorship, okay. all while consuming <laughs> a couple beers right. on education, <laughs> evolution, and the arborist community. 
<laughs> Man, I think we knocked it out of the park. I think we're good. I think there. we're good. We've had the couple beers. Yeah, yeah we, we got the, the beer down. Down. <laughs> Yep. Oh, so there we maybe, go. Maybe, okay. we, should, maybe <laughs> right. we should talk about our mentors. Oh, yeah. I oh, think nice. it would be good to go around the table. Should we call like, d- Should we call Doug? He won't answer. You don't think so? <laughs> Not this late. You can. No. Uh, you can. He, we'll give it a like shot. Yeah, give it a try. Yeah. yeah. You bet. You might prove me wrong, but anytime I call him past seven, it's a no go. <laughs> but if you call him, that might change things. <laughs> <laughs> he just likes Andrew more. That's oh. all. He's like, it's an emergency. Wh- which one is he going by these days? Or <laughs> usually, I feel like I've talked you about this but it can be like a roll of the dice like mm-hmm. what company you get on with and like who you learn from you know mm-hmm. oh it's such an, a big thing as far as uh doing it what's up bruce hey yeah. buddy how's it going good man how you doing i'm doing pretty good you're uh you're on our podcast oh nice yep <laughs> hey big doug how's it what's going good? Hey, Big Rob, how you doing, buddy? Oh, doing real good. So, uh, th- this whole podcast is about, I could play the intro for you. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we're, we're just kind of talking about uh, the evolution of tree work and, you know, how when we first started, we were climbing on ladders and, you know. And our mentors. And our, yeah, and so we got to the point where we we're talking about learning and mentors and whatnot. So, we figured we'd give you a call. Still, you know, doing it every day. <laughs> heck yeah you are man you got those videos uh that you put up uh back at the top you know yeah, back, back at the top um, so what have you been up to today i took the day off i actually had to get uh platelet therapy on my elbow have you ever had platelet therapy yet no no what they do is they take blood out of your they take your blood and then they put uh put it in a centrifuge and then they pull the platelets out of it, and they inject it right into the spot in your body, like in the uh, tendon or joint that's hurt, and um, and it heals it really quickly. Huh. Nice. You know, you get it. You, you, you're not quite as old as me yet, but once you get there, you. No, know. no, we're we're learning <laughs> from like our mentors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've uh, I've done it five or six times. There's a guy, Dr. Peterson. Um, that does it off channels and he's at the sports medical clinic and it works. And, um, yeah. Oh, it works great. Yeah. I've had him do, I've had him do my joints and my thumbs, you know, from gripping on the like sticks or branches all the time. Yeah. And your thumbs get sore and joint there. He did both of those and then he did my elbows and, uh, yeah, you know, I wish he could do my back, but I don't think they can do that. That's, that was my next question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, so that, that's something all arborists have, bad back, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So what do you think's the yeah. the biggest innovation you've seen in your career? Oh, in my career? I mean, the throw ball is probably wow. the thing that's got us into the canopy. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, that that's allowed us to climb. That, the foundation of all climbing, I think, is that throw ball. But my my most important thing in my tree service is my electric hand Um. You know, I oh look, everybody's got a pair of them, and you can just cruise through the pruning like ten times faster than normal. And uh, it's amazing how quickly you can do the work without all you do is pull your finger. So to me, that's like because that's that's all I I love to do now. You know, the evolution for me has been from big removals all the way to the finest pruning. And so that's where I'm that's where I'm concentrating my energy now is into the fine pruning. Um, and that's the evolution that I've had through this whole process. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I saw a, a video yeah. you cut in like a two inch uh, apple sprout, which is ridiculous. Oh, it's a, you see the beautiful cut it made? Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. No. It's like, it's... Yeah. It's beautiful, beautiful cut, you know? And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's all you, you just, you, especially all this fruit tree pruning. Oh um, yeah. You wouldn't want to necessarily bid it by the hour if you were going to be doing it with those electric hand snaps because it increases your productivity up so much, you know. Nice. But, um, yeah, but it makes it so it's fun. And that's like because my wrists and my arms were hurting so much all the time that uh, I decided to buy those almost like 10 years ago. You know, that's when I bought them originally. And they've improved them now. They just have a little tiny battery on them. And they make knockoffs for cheaper. But, uh, yeah, I really enjoy those. What's the and brand? The tenders, those in Faco, E N F A C O, and uh, the other innovations, of course, is just 
you know, like to me, I love the rope runner. I, I prefer to roll off of that. And, uh, you know, the ascenders have been just a gift. I mean, I remember when we were just using, you know, single hand ascenders like the old style with the old frog up the tree. The old know? yellow Jumar. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I got a guy that I work with, Cody, and he's still running off the monkey pit knot. And nice. he won't use the Blake's or nothing. I mean, that's he's so old school, and he he looks at my like my uh, my equipment, like you know my rope runner, and he's just like, no, no, I, <laughs> I'm sick. I can trust this old knot. I don't. That's a, that's crazy. Yeah, he, you can never change him. He's old school. He's just like an old redneck, but greatest guy in the world. Nice. <laughs> hey, to each their own, man. If that's what he wants, that by all means. He, yeah, that's what makes him happy, you know. I've tried to put my equipment on him and get him to roll with it, but he, he won't. He, just, yeah. he doesn't trust it. He looks at it and doesn't trust it. You got to trust what you're using, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, well, and so it, how about you guys? Like, what do you think of the, uh, you, you know, your best innovation or, you know, the the things for you guys that uh, have helped you the most? Well, recently, I think in the last, like, couple of years or more, it's been the Internet. Yeah, the so. amount of knowledge you can learn. Although I'm, I'm kind of tempted to go with We're you marketing. on throwball, because you know the, a lot of work. <laughs> the the yeah, the ability to uh, set the line up at the top of the tree. You know, you can set a line a hundred feet up if you hit a good shot. And uh, yeah, absolutely. That's crazy. I, I mean, remember the days of setting the ladders up against the trees and then you know trying to advance the lines with the pole saw. I mean, that is. That is a no go. Oh my god! <laughs> Remember, Dan? Dan had his like thirty six or thirty two foot ladder. Yeah. Big one, tall thing. And every time he, he'd be like, "We'll bring that thing out." I'd be like, "Oh god!" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put that thing up on it, the tree. Wasn't like, it wooden also? I no, know it wasn't. It was. It was a big old heavy aluminum ladder, man. I think it was thirty six feet. All right. Yeah, I'd get you up there a ways. That, <laughs> yeah, thirty two or thirty six. When you're but, standing uh, on top I of mean, a 36 foot ladder, just lanyarded <laughs> into a fur pole, and you're trying to set a line with two or three sections above you, that's well, not a good situation. You're not at 36 feet because your each foot is at the top of the ladder, and you're lanyarded in right above. <laughs> yeah, it, so you're like 40 something feet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? Wasn't it you guys? Wasn't it you guys that did like five or six full saws together at one time on a tree? <laughs> oh, like, well, oh record, so many. Yeah, it? eight, eight pull saws. Yeah, I no, think we're like eight, five yeah. or six. You and Andrew. Yeah. Yeah. I remember you guys telling me you were like five, five or six, and you. It, it was kind of a leaner, and you're able to just keep pushing it up. There, <laughs> yeah. <you know>? yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got to do what you got to do, man. That was, that was before we had the. Before we had to throw a ball, I yeah, think that was right in the transition period. Now I but now yeah, I toss I mean, boss them. Started, we didn't have anything. Yep. Now I toss boss it. I use the throw ball to pull the hanger. Get the throw ball wrapped around the hanger and then just pull the hanger out. Oh heck yeah, man! Toss we boss. we did a whole project over at Mount Pisgah with those oak trees, taking branches off. That was fun. Were you guys part of that when we did that? Oh gosh, over at Pisgah when we were just. Yeah, we went over there. All the a bunch of arborists with throw balls, and we were just oh, that was the arborist and the arboretum. Yeah, wasn't that? Yeah, fun? that was, was arborist and arboretum. Yeah, I, I yeah, remember that throw ball with all the guys. Wasn't that fun, Rob? That that was, that, that was cool. I. I, we ran into somebody there that just, I had cleaned up one too many of the guy's top jobs and, you know, whatnot. <laughs> and, it, and I had to leave early because I just couldn't be around the guy. You know, I was like. Really? Oh, I, yeah. Yeah. But, but you, one guy there you know, that that's, me too. that's one yeah. of the differences of the industry now and back in the day. Back in the day, you didn't, you know, talk to people on the internet or run into people as much. And so the crews, right. you know, the companies were like siloed, like. You know, we all worked for Sperry and it'd be like, oh, there's the Kyle King crew over there. Well, you we know, but got along with Kyle King's right. crew. Well, you, you get along with them, but there's like kind of a disconnect. You know, you like now you're friends with people on Facebook. And so you see what they're doing on the weekends and all yeah, the cool all trees. Right exactly. <laughs> you didn't do that stuff as much back in the day. You know, was, well, you know, and we see it. I mean, we see that. We know at some point we realize that there's far more work than we could ever do. Mm -hmm. Like there's room for more people. There's room for more employees. There's room, you know what I mean? So it's, there's no really competition because no matter how many people are, you know, how big we built it, 
it doesn't matter. There's always room for more. The trees are outgrowing us. You know what I mean? It's just this incredible transition. Now, there, there's more value um, to, to creating friendships and, and having good relationships than there is to, uh, you know, creating negative relationships and, and wedges. Uh, like, what, yeah. what's that going to gain you for your company? Nothing. You're not going to get more work because no. you're talking crap about your competition. Where no, it's a reflection. You have those fingers yeah, are not... pointing right back at you. Yeah. And, you know and it, I mean? you're pointing a finger, it's coming right back at you. Man. Oh yeah. And yeah. it's even it's even turned around to the opposite, where now we're communicating with other people and we're educating each other. You know, it used to be we you'd bring someone in and they'd teach your company how to do stuff. Now you're trading knowledge with all these people over the internet and you can go to tree stuff and you go to the climbing arborist and you know, the educated climber and all these different places and you have this huge huge library of knowledge at your fingertips it's amazing yeah back when back when me and andrew started you know when we first met or whatnot it would take five years to become a fully trained arborist now it takes like oh yeah no, a fraction of the time long at all. you yeah. know but that fine order that fine pruning man that takes years and years and some people never get it i yeah. mean there's plenty of barbers out there that own tree services that don't know how to prune trees that yeah. I've seen, you know, they're better. Some people are better removal. Some people are put their energy into pruning, but you know, I mean, there's, there's people out there that really should stick to maybe just doing removals. And then other people really probably, you know, it just depends on what you love to do. But, uh, I see that a lot. You know, we see a lot of bad pruning out there. That, and, that's uh, actually an interesting that point because pruning a tree is different than like building a fence. If you're a shitty fence builder, yeah. it's really obvious. <laughs> you're, yeah, you're, yeah. It's not straight lines. But if you're a shitty pruner, then that's up to an, a different kind of interpretation where it might not be as right. obvious to the homeowner. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it, it takes a trained eye. Like the way a you know, lion's tailed tree looks. You yeah. Know? yeah. Oh, it looks well, good. You limb that all the way up. And they're not looking at the cuts. Or, or where the cuts are, they're looking at the lack of branches, and yep. that's what they ask yeah. for. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's like, Becca, you were telling me the story earlier today about the, the client. I was like, I just don't see it. Yeah. <laughs> that was a funny thing for him to say. <laughs> yeah. Constantly. And that was when what you were. Oh, I, uh, we had a job earlier this week, and the the client just kept saying, I don't see it. It to a yes or no question. Like you were like, explaining the job to him, what yeah. you're going to do, right? Yeah, Nate was like, do you uh, want us to like cut over here to fill in this part of it? He's like, I, yeah, I don't really see it. Mm. <laughs> which, which goes to like <laughs> in tree work, <laughs> you know, it, it takes a certain eye. Yeah. Like it's like you hired, you know, that guy hired Nate to come out mm -hmm. because Nate's a professional and he knows how to prune a tree. And yet this guy was kind of arguing with him, like, eh, I don't know, <laughs> kind of what you're saying, yeah. you know. I had the same thing. I had that happen this week, actually, where a client told me to make a cut on a Japanese maple, and I was like, that's not going to happen. <laughs> it, you know, you hire the person, person's hiring you for your expertise. Yeah. But they're trying to tell you what to do. That yeah. Does, that, those two things don't apply. And I, I mean, think you can't, you can't do that. If you can explain to them why that's not the best cut to make generally i mean if they're the one that hired you more often than not i feel like they're perceptive to your expertise if you know well the biggest one is when it comes to a mature tree or a large tree right and it's weight reduction yeah and they want the thing they want to see results and they're, and they're driven by fear and you're like yeah. i took a four and a half five inch cut out of the tip of that branch you know this some big lard and it just happened earlier today a big old oak tree and she's like i can't really tell that you guys did anything i was like we took a five inch diameter limb <laughs> yeah. off of that job, limb nice yeah. pruning. Yeah. you know and then it, and the she's like cut. good job yeah, she yeah. basically just said all i want to know is that it's not going to break if we get an ice storm or a snowstorm yeah yeah and i was like i i, I said you're good you know <laughs> we took a ton of weight out of that thing mm -hmm. I, I wanted to tell her that 
the likelihood of her whole tree failure is probably greater. Than <laughs> <laughs> we should probably Sorry. start the retrenchment process at some point in the future. But that limb's solid. But yeah, that that limb's not going to break. That <laughs> if, that, if that limb comes down, the whole tree is coming down. <laughs> well, you know, she got me thinking. I was like, well, what if there was like an inch of ice on this tree? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah you- can't really plan for that though and then um, you think well does it well, have our you know, malaria does it need a root crown mm-hmm. i mean what's going on it's a veteran oak yeah it's a tough call there if you can't see anything wrong with the base i mean you probably know, you fine to judge that we've had the ice storms and snow storms recently in the last few years and it survived those yeah you know, it does have a history of being strong as it is yeah you know and, and that's I a good thing to, to tell people those. yeah it really is yeah yeah yeah, I think educating the public is another, I mean, not just ourselves, yeah. right? Like, part of our community is, it's it's ex- extended to beyond mm-hmm. just the professionals. Yeah. It's yeah. like, you know, or well, part of our mission, yeah. most and, of us and, at least. Is and it's not just educate, it's educating properly, too. Exactly. So, so you can educate and be a dick, or you can educate and actually get something across to people. Right. Well. Which, and the more you learn from this stuff, the better you're going to be able to educate and the more trust you're going to be able mm-hmm. to earn with the clients. You know, oh. if you if you can bring this information and talk like you know what you're talking about and bring a little science into it, yep. a lot of times that's enough to kind of sell it to them. Well, that's what I told the lady. Way. I said, if you take 10% of the weight out of the tip of a horizontal branch, you know, basically a rough estimate is you've reduced 50% of the stress on that limb. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and so it should be fine. Basic physics. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's yeah. basic physics. I mean, it's basic physics. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so uh, that's a pretty yeah, good line. True. And a lot of it comes down to lines. You yeah. got to you got to have lines to tell people in certain circumstances. Yeah. And when they say, I don't know, it doesn't, I don't think I can tell if you really took enough off that, then you need to throw them a line. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's not bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there can yeah. be a little bit of that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, Doug, it's been great having you on, and we're going to have to have you on again. So yeah. Friday nights, just be ready right, for well, random calls because, call. yeah, as it, <laughs> as it applies, we're just going to try. If you if you can't talk, don't answer. But, uh, but you know, and we'll we'll no, definitely have to have I'll you on have more. Time for you. Uh, all you're right, the right, man, well, dude. I love you guys. Right on. Love you too, I man. Love you guys. And, uh, all right. You hey. have a great night. And, uh yeah, I look forward to meeting some of the other voices someday soon too. Nice. Yeah, nice. well, w- when we can, you'll have to come into the uh, the Tree Thinking Studios, aka my garage, <laughs> and, uh, and do it live. <laughs> right. Love you, brother. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Right on. All right. Well, that so was... I gather from that that Doug was a mentor. That was real. <laughs> Without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doug goes way back. Yeah. Way back for nice. sure. He's, uh, yeah. You know, it's great that you called him because one of my main mentors currently, who is Nate, yeah, is. Doug was his Doug mentor. Doug was his mentor. So yeah. Was oh like, yeah, yeah. Oh my grandpa. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, sorry, Doug. No, I don't mean it like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pop, pop. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. No, Doug is a grandpa. Oh yeah. Yeah, he oh, has, yeah. has been for a long time. Yep. He's my pop, pop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Well, nice. you know. The uh, the next thing we had on here was tips and tricks, but it kind of feels like we've done a lot of tips and tricks already. <laughs> yeah, yeah I think we've talked mostly about tips and tricks, actually. Yeah, yeah this whole episode has been, uh, the tip and trick is uh, find a reputable source online and absorb as much knowledge as you can. Or in person. Or in person, person. yeah. yeah. And if you're lucky, you get a mentor. Yep. And a pop pop. Yep. And and a pop, yeah. Pop. If you're online, you'll probably be teaching your mentor some tips and tricks too. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, and you know that's that's kind of an, another angle. Yeah. If you want to, if you're coming up and you want to earn respect, you know, go get some do of your the, research. Yeah. Yeah. Do your research. Learn these tips and tricks, and you might bring some knowledge that you know the old guy on the crew didn't previously know, and he might respect you a little bit more and be willing to teach you a little bit more information. You know, uh, kind of take you under his wing if if you show that initiative that you're going to take your own time to learn these tricks and uh, 
be a value member of the crew. Yeah, and an experience I had with some of my mentors is I'd bring a, a tip forward and we'd kind of work through it together. You know, we'd be like, this is unfamiliar to both of us. Mm-hmm. And we start implementing it. Okay, it doesn't work so well here. Okay, it works great here. And this is like we fine-tune that into the, that position where we could actually use that tip and trick to up our game. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that I mean, that's exactly what we're, you know, that what this is all about is building community through using, you know, as many resources as you can to educate each other and mm-hmm. just, you know, leave the leave the whole industry better than you found it. Um, you know, I think we're ready for final thoughts. Uh, you want to, you want to start us off, Rob? Yeah. I, you know, th- this is all about education and, and kind of learning and mentorship seems like the theme for this episode. And I would say that, uh, you'll get out of it what you put into it. Yeah. Nice. You're always so succinct. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to bring up climbing competitions again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably every episode. But I think like a badass community where you're going to learn a ton of stuff is a climbing competition. Like, mm-hmm. Enter it or just go and hang out. Like all the tips and tricks you can think of, you know, and people, everyone's willing to show you. Yeah. Even as a competitor, you're competing against someone. Be like, yeah, check this out. I use this for the aero rescue event. It was awesome. Try it out. You know, yeah, great community. I'm gonna say a lot of stuff here, but I and I know I've been talking a lot this whole episode, but <laughs> I think and the reason for that is because I'm still relatively new to all this, and I have a lot. I'm just soaking in information every day so much. I'm like a fucking sponge for this. And um, so, yes, absolutely, online resources are incredible. But I have had incredible mentors, Corey, Jamie, Andrew, uh, Nate, Adam, like, Jeff, everybody, like, and, uh, and I'm also really excited about uh, the social media aspect of it. Like, there's a lot of uh, female arborists that I, like, here, here in Eugene, I don't know any others, but I'm sure they're out there holler if you're here. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, we get, we get two female arborists on the crew. Nice. Yeah. See, there we go. See? Yeah. And yeah. here we are talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, tree people are good people, and um, I'm really thankful, and uh, all of the the learning is in full swing and um yeah i don't know i i had a lot to say and now <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just overwhelmed yeah. by my like gushing heart of uh how thankful i am to <laughs> to keep practicing and having such awesome people in my life and the community is great it, you know near and far um so that's you're it. doing you're doing great. Yeah, it's I'm awesome to watch you progress. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, it, it, it it's shows. Been, it's been cool to see uh, just the attitude and just to get after it. You know, I mean, you embody a lot of what we've talked about as far as uh, knuckling down and just get learning knowledge and sharing knowledge and just being an asset to the team. <laughs> don't make me cry someone else say something <laughs> okay i'll say something stupid oh god um <laughs> yeah no the uh <laughs> no. <laughs> not you <laughs> not, not me. i'm just kidding uh yeah no the community um the community has been incredible from the like the first moment I stepped into into this whole arborist career uh, till this point and probably till the day I die, it's been just incredible. The people and the heart of it, uh, our love for trees and our love for that kind of camaraderie or that kinship that we kind of talked about a little bit earlier is just something so unique and so special, and I haven't experienced that anywhere else. And it's just I love being a part of that, and it's it's incredible. Um, you know, we, we're, we're combined by our love of trees, but we're also combined by our love of things like the captain's hook. Just, just, <laughs> oh my just an incredible, an incredible piece of gear. And if, if you don't haven't used the captain's hook yet <laughs> and, you, and you don't love it yet, you just haven't tried it. It's just, it's the best. He's obsessed. <laughs> oh my God. You have dreams about. <laughs> I really do. Did you see tree stuff's giving one away on Instagram? Yeah. 
Yeah, we oh, already yeah, have yeah. one. Yeah. Like, well, why didn't they have this like a you year ago? Could have two hooks. Yeah, yeah, you haven't imagined using two tree <laughs> Captain Hooks at the same time? <laughs> I, I don't know if my brain could handle it. <laughs> Can you imagine Captain Hook climbing a tree? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On Dynaglide. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh man! Oh my goodness! <laughs> All right, Andrew, it's your turn. Yeah. <laughs> <Take us home. laughs> well, uh, this episode has been a lot of fun because it really embodies so much of what this podcast is about, as far as just connecting with people, sharing information, building community. Um, you know, hopefully everybody's enjoyed joined this stuff as much as we are. Cause it's been a blast, you know, it, it was great having, uh, Nick on and, you know, tree stuff's been such a, uh, such a big part of us, you know, kind of taking a step into the, into the digital realm and, you know, not just doing this on the back porch, but actually bringing some mics along, you know, and, uh, being, hopefully we we can be part of that, uh, building the community and education, um, get online, try to soak up as much information as you can talk to people and just see where it goes uh and with that stay safe and watch your top knot <laughs>